Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. We are back in business with our bolt after yesterday running out of juice. So we made it yesterday to Wolf Creek. You gotta go watch the other video. I see if I can put a link up here. If not, look down below in the description. But anyway, made it to Wolf Creek, dead empty. And now, um, well, we charged there overnight. That was really nice at our friend's place. They have a NEMA 1450. So we plugged in and this morning we were fully charged again. And then we drove to Helena. That is about 30 miles or so. And that took away about 50 miles of range. And uh, so we went here for lunch with our friends at uh, Sats Hut, uh, where you get really tasty chicken. And so we are plugged in here at this Clipper Creek. And we have gotten uh, seven kilowatts while we were eating. We were in there for probably an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, well, we're back in business. We're fully charged again. And uh, we show an average there of 184 miles. And from here, we gotta make it back home um, in one shot. There's no chargers. So, but that shouldn't be a problem. And uh, yeah, we gotta do a little trip here in town and then off we go. <laughs> over the pass from Helena uh, as you get out of town you quickly climb up to McDonald Pass and we're already over that so we're already back uh, on the west side of the Continental Divide and uh, our charge has dropped a little bit already there we're showing 80% on the display and uh, this bolt still does the same thing as the 2020 did. It actually shows up to 5% more because we are at 78.8% and the bar here will not drop away until we hit uh, actually 75%. So at 75.1%, the, the, the car will still show 80%. So that's the uh, same thing our 2020 did. A um, little bit misleading, but that's all right if you know it anyway. And so right now you can see we got green going up from the 144 there. We got an almost green ring around the speedometer. So we are uh, somewhat efficient here. And since we're over the pass from now on, it's basically downhill. So we should be doing pretty well. We got 144 miles average showing there and 118 minimum. And we actually have to go 118 miles to home. So that's not too bad. And then let's see if we can get the temperature here. The 
car says it is 19 degrees out right now so it's not too bad and it's 4 36 in the afternoon so it is already getting dark out here in about 30 minutes it will be pitch dark so some other stats while we're driving here it shows a uh, battery uh, heater hasn't been on in uh, almost 93,000 seconds so this been about 26 hours ago that the battery heater was on so it came on last time uh, yesterday while we were driving towards Wolf Creek but it hasn't been on since at all and actually the car sat inside overnight in about a 50 degree garage so it didn't lose much heat anyway the battery pack shows 46 degrees and the battery coolant shows 30 degrees I assume that the battery uh, coolant temperature sensor is under the hood exposed to the elements somewhat uh, and that's why it reads that low currently the cabin heater is using 3300 watts we are set to 71 degrees and it's uh, on manual at this point it was uh, we can turn that on to auto and see what it does here uh, seems to stay roughly the same Yesterday it was uh, close to 4,000 watts on the drive um, with uh, about the same temperature probably. So we are relatively high and with uh, adjusting it myself I probably could bring it down some more into uh, or below 2,000 watts. There we go now it's up to 4,000 watt again on auto. I believe the manual says auto is the most efficient setting that's not quite true uh, I definitely can beat that by controlling manually especially if I can look here on the OBD reader what it shows and our efficiency already has come down to 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour and so a two and a half is roughly what you gotta expect in the winter time uh, especially if you got uphills like we do here uh, or higher speeds like we have on the interstate um, you're not gonna do much better unless you turn your heater off but then you'll be freezing so you can see here it still shows 80% it's kind of tough to see on this near display the bars are very narrow we are down at 75.3 so as soon as that 0.3 goes away this last green bar above that 75 will go away and it will drop to 75% uh, there it went so now it's at 75% and here we go 74.9 so now this bar from 70 to 75% will stay there until the actual uh, state of charge will drop to 69.9 uh, it will drop below 70 60 miles an hour here 
we're stuck behind the car in front of us the right lane would allow for somewhat higher speeds of 65 to 70 but we can do the left lane the left lane is snow covered and these tires here on the car are just not cutting it those are the uh, factory all-season tires and uh, they're pretty much worthless in this weather uh, this just requires studless snow tires so anyway um, we actually managed to come up to 2.6 kilowatt hours um, or 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour we got uh, 93 miles left and because we're going so slow we actually got a little green showing up above the 93 there so we're doing pretty efficient on the other hand uh, temperature has dropped it was actually down to 11 degrees it just came back up a little bit here in the past couple minutes and uh, the actual state of charge is 51 percent right now there hasn't been any preheating and as we can see the battery temperature stayed roughly the same at 44 degrees and uh, the coolant temperature at 33 degrees so roughly the same as it was and the cabin heater is basically stuck at 4000 watts here most of the time it is set to auto and uh, 70 degrees and for some reason that seems to require 4000 watts since uh, we got plenty I'm not worried about it otherwise I would manage that myself and see if I can get it down to half that so we still got 92 miles average showing and we only got 66 to go so we should be totally fine even with this weather here with the snow blowing out here shouldn't be an issue made it to Missoula and we've been going pretty slow here somewhere between 35 and 50 max um, almost as slow as we did yesterday on uh, going the other direction but yesterday it was for a different reason here it is mainly uh, well traffic road conditions mostly because of the bad tires these all-season tires they're just yeah they're not good for this weather with uh, our regular studless snow tires that we have on all cars that we used to have on our 2020 bolt i actually would have passed i would have used the left lane here because uh, those studless snow tires stick much better and because of that you get a little pre-warning before you get wiped out with these tires here you just wipe immediately out without notice and so we're stuck going behind all this traffic here which uh, was good for efficiency you can see the green line going up there above the 65 and uh, we're at 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour at this point um, it is so uh, let me see if I can turn that up some there we go it is 15 degrees out according to the car here we still got the heat set to 70 but uh, I turned the auto off because I needed more heat up to the windshield so that uh, none of the snow would freeze onto it so yeah it's slow going we got about another 30 miles to go and that won't be a problem obviously we got uh, plenty of charge left here so and at this speed uh, <laughs> we can go really far arrived at home We made it home, no problem. <laughs> and uh, so 
this shows 61.7 kilowatt hours used uh, out of 66 now it just switched because uh, air conditioning is going and lights are on and stuff um, driving and accessories so basically uh, the lights and things um, used 86% of that and 14% of that is for the climate settings and then for some reason here it shows battery conditioning 0% and uh, I'm not sure if that is actually true because let's look here so we're at 19.6% state of charge um, there we go thermal conditioning time uh, so this was about 1800 seconds ago so that was roughly uh, five minutes past Missoula when it actually did battery conditioning I did miss that because I had to focus on the road rather than on this thing here but so the car reports that it was doing battery conditioning during the drive and that was actually visible too in these numbers here um, this temperature was up to uh, 45 degrees and this one was up to 34 degrees at the time and you can see now it came down quite a bit again since we got home and it had to do battery conditioning because we were going so slow on the interstate and going slow draws very little power and so it doesn't really heat itself up especially with uh, temperatures like this it's only 15 degrees Fahrenheit here so uh, not sure why this here shows zero and by the way there's lifetime is 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour that's everybody else driving not me <laughs> uh, if I'm driving it usually looks a little different here that's 2.9 that we had on this trip of almost 180 miles um, and it's 2.9 because we went between 35 and 55 for about the last uh, 50 miles or so uh, traffic just didn't allow us to go any faster and uh, what else we got so yeah we're at 19.6 over there we got basically 41 miles left and uh, over here we were going up into the green on the last stretch because we're going so slow so it was more towards the max miles still available um that's about it on there what we got here something else that's interesting maybe uh, let's see thermal conditioning and then oh the cabin heater so okay right now we're drawing 1700 watts and I had this and uh, now it's not on auto but I had it on auto for most of the time and it was pretty much at 4000 watts all the time so um, you definitely can do better by controlling this yourself rather than letting it do auto you can definitely bring that uh, that uh, number here down for a battery heater if you do uh, your own settings there so um, overall the trip went pretty eventless going home uh, that was to be expected we probably would have come home with less range uh, I would assume we would have been 10% or lower actually but because we had to go so slow here the last 40-50 uh, miles um, that's the reason we have that much uh, left here um, if we could have gone faster we would have gone faster but between traffic road conditions and these crappy tires uh, that it wasn't possible so but yeah we made it and the car did just fine not an issue um, it is uh, definitely less efficient than the 2020 Bolt that we had uh, I can see that and I mean the EPA rating shows that as well other than that it drives just like the Bolt pretty much uh, it feels as comfortable I don't think it feels more comfortable or less comfortable it's just about the same so we're pretty happy we were very happy with the 2020 Bolt that we had and uh, I would say this year is pretty much comparable a little new style it uh, looks a little fancier in here than what we had and it's got fancier seats
And this is, by the way, this is also an LT, so just like our Bolt. And I'm not sure what the packages are for the Bolt EUV. Our Bolt was loaded with uh, three packages that you could add on that just brought it below the Premier. So we didn't have the, the roof rails and the, the fancy rear view mirror. And, and the interior lighting. I'm not sure how the EUV is, uh, what the options are there, but this has basically the same safety equipment and safety packages uh, as far as I can tell that our LT, Bolt LT had. And this here is a Bolt EUV LT. So uh, it, I don't know if there's any more packages that you could add to this particular model or not. Um, it definitely has the ventilated seats that our Bolt did not have. And we notice there's more room on the back. In the back seat, there's more leg room. The trunk seems to be the same. And uh, yeah, pretty much everything else is kind of the same. And uh, yeah, we still, I don't know if you can see that, but there's just no lights up here. That is kind of weird. And uh, um. Thank you, Wayne, for telling us that uh, you said your 2020 has lights up there. And uh, I don't remember if our 2020 had lights or not up there, but this uh, here, also here on this side, there's no lights. I don't know. I, I don't see a light. I don't see a switch or anything. So uh, let me know. Am I missing something or what the heck's going on? Does this one really not have it? And the 2020 Bolt had it? I mean, that would be kind of a step back. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, well, but the drive was good. It was comfortable. It did its job, um, uh, especially on the way home. That was no big deal. Um, make sure that you go watch our other video on the drive to Wolf Creek, because that was the interesting part. And uh, it wouldn't have been nearly as interesting if I would have paid attention to the exits on the interstate. But uh, yeah, go watch that video. That is, uh, uh, yeah, interesting, exciting. <laughs> so this drive home was quite boring, basically. Um, overall, I expected the car to do just fine because these bolts are, I mean, the 2020 bolt we had, it, it was just a great car. So I didn't expect this EUV to do uh, much worse or, or I didn't expect it to do worse at all. I expected it to do the same or maybe even better. I don't know that it did better or like I said, it, it gives me the same feel for driving everything. And basically the only thing better we found is uh, pretty much that it has more leg room for passengers. So my daughter had plenty of room and my wife didn't have to slide forward at all. So that was definitely cool. So yeah, um, make sure you, if you haven't watched the trip to Wolf Creek that you go watch that video. Make sure you, if you haven't watched the, our first impression and second impression video that you go watch those too. And uh, you should uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell anyway so that you get to see all our future videos. Um, I don't know how many more videos I can make with uh, this 2022 Bolt EUV here because that is just a loaner from our electric company that we have uh, for a few days. So unfortunately, we got to take it back here in a couple days. And so, <laughs> yeah, we don't get to keep it. And in uh, any event, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for this video. Please subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. And go down below in the description and hit the link to our Redbubble store and go check it out. Um, there's lots of cool stuff there, EV inspired things, uh, socks, t-shirts, shower curtains, I mean, anything you can imagine. And uh, so definitely those are good gifts for family, friends, for EV lovers, for yourself. Who cares? Buy yourself a gift. The holidays are coming. Christmas is coming. So <laughs> uh, go check it out and uh, maybe buy something from our store. That would be wonderful. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.